Welcome to the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indians Art of Storytelling. I am Katie Gerke with the Museum Learning and Programs Department. I would like to gratefully acknowledge the Native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant Native communities who make their home here today. Many Native communities tell stories in winter that educate as well as entertain. Each February, the museum celebrates storytelling by inviting Native storytellers to share their stories. Now, I would like to introduce to you Tlingit artist, Jean Tagaban. Hey, gonna teach, gonna teach friends, relatives, brothers and sisters. Um, allow me to introduce myself. Kayao you hock to a sock, duck den tana cut kalkitak, kalk to kandu ay hochiti, which katanyaria cut ha ishikti hin you do a sock, tlen kitawaywaya, flagi, Filipino ay cut gonna teach, gonna teach, and ya kushani gonna teach ho ho. I just said hi. My name is Jean Tagaban. My Slinket name is Gayao. I'm of the Duck Dane Tong clan, the Raven Freshwater Sockeye clan from Huna, Alaska. The child of a Wishkaton Eagle Shark clan from Ahuan in Juneau, Alaska. I'm Cherokee, Slinket, and Filipino. I'm a Cherokee, Clinkapino. <laughs> and uh, at this time, too, I, I'd just like to acknowledge where I'm coming from from right now is the land of the Coast Salish peoples, the territory of the Puyallup and the town and city uh, that they call Tacoma, but traditionally is, is called Tahoma, Tahoma. And I uh, honor uh, the lands of the people that I'm coming from right now. Gonatish, gonatish, gonatish. And it's really good to be here amongst everybody here to tell stories. And, uh, um, and it was my grandfather who said that you're a storyteller. You're a storyteller. Your life is a story. And so you, you got to tell a good story. You tell a good story. You are the story of the stars, the moon, the sun, the water, the rivers, the oceans, the mountains. You are a storyteller. Now you go get me a cup of coffee and a cookie. So I'd like just to share a few of these stories with you today that, uh, that have influenced me in my life. And this story I'd like to share with you first, it comes from uh, my mentor, my teacher, Larry Littlebird of um, uh, Laguna Pueblo, and uh, is down in New Mexico, USA. A long time ago, all the animals gathered together to have a meeting. Now there was bear, mountain lion, eagle, raven, grandmother mouse was there. All the animals were there. And it was mountain lion who's in charge of this meeting. So mountain lion stepped up and said, oh, my brothers and sisters, it's so good that you're here. We have many important things to talk about. They were just about to start the meeting. And then they heard rabbit outside singing as loud as he could. Nobody can hear a thing. So mountain lion goes out there and says, hey, rabbit, we're trying to have a meeting in there. But rabbit kept singing away. And so mountain lion goes, took rabbit's arm and put it into his back pocket. You can have that back later when we're done. Now let's get on with this meeting. And rabbit was outside with only one arm. They were just about to start the meeting again. And then they heard rabbit outside drumming away with only one arm. Nobody could hear a thing. This time it was brother bear. 
Brother Bear goes, hey, rabbit, we're trying to have a meeting in there. A rabbit kept singing away. And so Bear goes, took rabbit's other arm and put that into his back pocket. You can have that back later when we're done. Now let's get on with this meeting. And rabbit was outside with no arms. They were just about to start the meeting again. And then they heard a rabbit outside drumming away. No, he was stomping away with his feet. Nobody could hear a thing. This time it was coyote. It was coyote. And coyote goes out there, hey rabbit, we're trying to have a meeting in there. A rabbit kept singing away. And so coyote goes, took rabbit's leg and put that into his back pocket. You can have that back later when we're done. Maybe. Rabbit was outside, no arms only, one leg. They were just about to start the meeting again. And then they heard rabbit outside, drumming away with that big old fluffy rabbit tail of his. Ah, nobody could hear a thing. This time it was Eagle. Eagle rises up out of his chair, circles over Rabbit. Everyone's going, hey, Rabbit, shh. It's Eagle, man, it's Eagle. But Rabbit was too busy singing away. Ah, so Eagle comes down. Picks up rabbit and was going, oh no, rabbit. And then eagle goes, choo, choo, takes rabbit's head. Everyone went, oh man, man that hurt. But they still heard. Because Rabbit, his song was coming from his heart. Whenever you sing from your heart, whenever you follow your heart, nobody can take that away from you. So they gave Rabbit his head back. They gave Rabbit his two arms back. They had to wrestle Coyote to get his leg back. And they let Rabbit sing his song whenever he wanted to. Ah, sing with me. Oh, so it follow your heart, follow your hearts. And we have these tricksters out there in the world. And oftentimes these tricksters, all cultures have trickster stories. You know, and uh, those trickster stories are there to, to teach you how to teach. Those tricksters are there to teach you how to teach. And if we take pay attention and listen to them, and what are the lessons? What are the lessons through those, those teachings? And so uh, one of the first stories I heard, and this is a story I heard probably before I was even born, when I was in my first home, in my mother's womb. You see, my grandmother, my great grandmother, she would call, and she she called my mom up. She says, "Oh, now let me talk to that 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 baby," and my mom would put the phone up to her belly, and it was there that my uh, grandmother would speak to me. It was there that my grandmother would speak to me, in the language, the Sanket language. She would sing me songs and she would tell me stories. And this is one of the first stories I ever heard. Raven was walking along the beach and it was the beginning of time and the world was dark. The stars, the moon and the sun were kept in boxes by a wealthy old man. He lived at the headwaters of the Nas River. The fishermen of the night, the spirits of the night told Raven of these treasures. And so Raven went to the house of the old man. Raven went to the house 
of Nashok Ankawu. And it was there that Raven saw the old man's beautiful daughter. She's drinking water from the stream. Raven had a plan. He was going to get the stars, the moon, and sun for all the people of the world. So Raven, he changed his spirit into a tiny hemlock needle. And when that beautiful daughter went to drink her water, Raven floated down and he fell in her cup. And when she drank that water, she also swallowed Raven. And soon she became pregnant and she gave birth to Raven in the form of a human child. Now everyone loved this child, everyone, except the mother-in-law. You see, it was the mother-in-law. She knew this little child. This child was really Raven, had that spirit of Raven in it. Because if you've ever seen a Raven, its head move up, down, back, forth, and all around. Ah, she could tell. And she'd go, oh, that's not the, that, that there's really Raven. Oh, you guys don't listen to me. And everyone said, oh, you're just crazy, old lady. Goes crazy. Go away, go away, go away. They'd say, go away. Oh, and nobody listened to that mother-in-law. And you'll still find to this day, nobody listens to the mother-in-law. And so Raven, Raven, he's going to get the stars, the moon, and sun for all the people of the world. So that child with the spirit of Raven pointed to the corner of the house, the box that contained the stars, and it began to cry. <laughs> and the old man, he goes, no, you can't have that box. He cried some more. <laughs> but the old man gave in to him. He took that box down and he placed it in front of his grandchild. And he says, you don't open that box. And that little child looked up and said, so he played on that box. He ate on the box and he danced on that box. And when nobody was around and nobody was looking, what do you think he did? Yes, he opened that box and out of the box flew the stars into the nighttime sky forever. All caught heels, the old man. My precious objects are gone forever. Ah, oh, but he couldn't be upset with his little grandchild. Oh, he loved his grandchild. The child with the spirit of Raven, he pointed to the other corner of the house, the box that contained the moon, and it began to cry. And the old man goes, no, you can't have that box. The child cried some more. And again, the old man gave in to him. He took that box down and he placed it in front of his grandchild. He says, now you don't open that box. And that little baby looked up at his grandfather and said, oh. Now, that child played on that box. He ate on that box. And he danced on that box. And when nobody was looking, what do you think he did? Yes, he opened that box. And out of that box flew the moon into the nighttime sky forever. Oh, God, Dios, the old man. My precious objects are gone forever. Oh. But still, he couldn't be upset with his grandchild. He loved his grandchild. Now Raven is patient. He's very patient. That child with the spirit of Raven, he pointed to the other corner of the house, the box that contained the sun, and he began to cry. And the old man goes, no, you can't have that box. That child cried some more. Ah, uh, and still the old man refused to bring the box down for him. That child cried and cried and cried. And he cried so much that he got sick. He got so sick that the people thought that he might die. And it was the beautiful daughter. She picked up her child and said, Father, is there anything worth more than the life of your grandchild? Oh, my dear, you're breaking my heart. Oh, oh, oh. I'll do, I'll, I'll do this, he says. And he went up to the people and says, oh, your people, my people, you watch my grandchild. You make sure he doesn't open this box. And all the people looked up at him and said, oh, yes, 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 yes. So the child played on that box. He ate on the box. He slept on the box. And he danced on that box. After a while, 
Some of the people got tired, so they went to sleep. Some of them got hungry, so they went to go get something to eat. And when nobody was looking, that child with the spirit of raven changed his spirit back into a bird again and took the last box, the one that is called the box of daylight. And he flew out the smoke hole with it. Oh, God, my precious objects are gone forever. Ah, now Raven was walking along the beach and he had that box with him, the box of daylight. And he came up to those fishermen of the night, the spirits of the night, and they're cooking food. And Raven was hungry and he's always hungry. And he goes up to him and says, ah, give me your food. And they look at Raven and say, oh, go away. Oh, no, go away. We're not going to give you our food. Oh, Raven, he got upset, says, ah, oh, give me your food. I free the stars, the moon and sun into the nighttime sky forever. In this box in here, I have a gift for everyone. Now give me your food. And still the spirits of the night, they said, oh, no, Lake, go away. So Raven, in his anger, he opened the box just a crack and daylight showed itself and went back into the box. You see, I freed the stars, the moon, the sun. I have the most precious gift in here for everyone. Now give me your food. And still the people said, oh, no, go away, go away. You're just going to trick us. Oh, now this made Raven really angry. So Raven, he took that box and he opened it and daylight flashed throughout the sky. The spirits of the night, they ran away and hid. Some hid in the sky, some hid in the forest, some hid in the waters. The ones who hid in the sky became all the birds of the world. The ones who hid in the forest became all the animals of the world. And then the ones who hid in the waters, they became all the fish in the world. And then there are the ones who stood up straight and tall and they became the human beings. And they saw their world clearly for the first time and they marveled at the beauty of it. And this is how Raven brought daylight to the world. Ooh. And it was my grandmother. It was my great grandmother. She says, now, now, now my child, you remember every time you have a gift that lifts in your heart. Sometimes you just need to open it up and let your light shine. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Oh, you never forget that. Raven was walking along the beach and looks far out into the ocean and it sees an island, an island throwing fire into the nighttime sky. Raven wants to get that fire for all the people of the world, but he doesn't know how. Raven's brother, Hawk, comes walking along the beach. Hawk is proud. He's a proud young man, proud of his long beak. Raven asks him, can you help me? Can you help me? What you want me to do? He says, I want you to go get that fire out there, way out there for me. How am I going to do that? I'll fix it for you, says Raven. So Raven goes up into a tree and he grabs a branch and he puts it into Hawk's beak. And he ties it in there with roots. And he puts pitch at the end of that branch. And he says, now fly out there and give me that fire. And he says, Yiko Ayakwan, that means have courage, be brave. What you're doing is for all the people of the world. And so Hawk, he flies way out there. Long time has been flying. He gets that fire and he flies to it once, twice, three times. And on the fourth time, he flies through it and he gets that fire. Hawk is flying back to shore now. And he has that fire, that man, that young man with that long beak. And that fire in his beak starts to melt his beak. It's hot, melted down to a curved beak that you see now. 
and he's about to pay, but the tears are running down that young man's face. But he knows what he's doing is a good thing. Uh, he hangs on to that fire. Hawk, hawks fly back to shore and Raven sees that he's having trouble. Raven calls out to him, you go out and quad. Have courage, be brave, my brother, which are doing it for all the people of the world. And that's when Hawk flies back to shore and Raven takes that fire. Raven takes that fire and he throws it into the rocks. He throws it into the trees. He throws it into the water. He throws it into all the animals out there. It takes that fire and he throws it into the human beings. And now we all have that fire. We all have that fire that hawks suffered to bring to the people. But more important than that, we all have that spirit. We all have that spirit that lives in all things all around us. The trees hold that spirit. Go to the trees if you want to remember. The water holds that spirit. That water. That water is life. Ah, oh, yes. And the sun warms us. Warms us. So go out there and light the spirit. Light that fire in the hearts of the people. Ah, oh, that juice. Oh, ho, 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 ho.